Welcome to one of the favorite lessons that I give to kids when I'm tutoring them. It's about Le Chatelier's principle and how it affects systems at equilibrium. Now the deal with equilibrium is that it's a balanced state where you have some reactants, some products, and there's a balance between the two. Le Chatelier's principle says that if you somehow change a system that's already in balance, already at equilibrium, it will shift to offset whatever change you've made. This works amazingly well with an example, so I'm going to use this. It's called the Haber process. It's reacting nitrogen in hydrogen to produce ammonia. One last thing I need you to note is that it's an exothermic process, which, mean, which means heat is produced over the course of the reaction. So, the questions that I have for you include, let's say we have a system like this, nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia, all at equilibrium, balance, we have some reactants, some products, and the rate of forward and reverse reaction is the same, so it's just sitting there. It seems like the concentrations are about the same constantly over time. What happens when we add N2? Well, if we add nitrogen, we want to offset that change somehow. That's what Le Chatelier's principle says. In order to offset added nitrogen, we're going to consume it by reacting it and moving this, shifting the equilibrium to the right. If we can create some ammonia, that means we're going to end up consuming some of the N2. Le Chatelier's principle really qualitatively just says that when you add one of the reactants, like N2, the equilibrium shifts to the right or towards the products. The same is true if you add hydrogen. Hydrogen's a reactant, and if you have a balance between reactants and products, and you add one of the reactants, the system will move to offset that by forming some ammonia out of the new hydrogen. The system will react by shifting to the right here. And you can probably guess that if we added ammonia to the right-hand side, we want to consume some of it. And so we end up shifting to the left in that case. Let's try this again. What if we remove some nitrogen? If we end up removing some of the nitrogen that's in the system, we want to replace it to offset the change. To replace the nitrogen, we have to move or convert some of the ammonia back into nitrogen by shifting to the right. Same is true if we want to replace some missing hydrogen. If we remove one of the reactants, we want to replace it, and so we have to shift our equilibrium to the left. Hopefully it's obvious by now that if we removed some ammonia, we want to replace it by shifting the equilibrium to the right. And that's exactly what happens qualitatively. Now I'm going to give you some of the tougher ones. Like what happens if we increase the temperature or add heat? Well, this is how I like to handle that. We have a negative delta H. That means heat is produced over the course of the reaction, or heat is a product. What I personally like to do is to actually write plus heat on the product side and treat it just like we did in the previous examples. If I'm increasing the temperature, I'm adding heat into the reaction. That's kind of like adding a product, and to consume some of that heat, we're going to shift away from it to the right. Ah, that's left. My bad. We want to consume heat when we're adding heat, and so we shift to the left. For this exothermic reaction, if we decrease the temperature or remove some of the heat, we want to replace it, and so we shift to the right. And I actually mean the right this time. Now, there are two other kinds of questions that teachers ask about Le Chatelier's principle that I haven't asked you yet. One of them is changing the actual volume of the container that it's done in. If I increase the volume of the container, 
that's going to have the effect of decreasing the total pressure inside the container. In order to alleviate that decrease in pressure, we want to increase the number of moles of gas that are in total inside the canister. When we increase the volume of a system, the equilibrium shifts to whichever side has more moles of gas because more moles of gas will help increase the pressure which alleviates the decrease in pressure that the increase in volume caused. Or you could just memorize it this way. Increase volume, shift to the side with more moles of gas. I have four moles of gas on the reactant side. I have two moles of gas on the product side. So increasing the volume makes me shift to the left because I can double my pressure for every mole of this that I convert, or for every two moles of this that I convert into four moles of this. And consequently, if I'm asked to decrease my volume, that increases my pressure. We want to alleviate that increase in pressure by shifting to the side of the reaction with fewer moles of gas. And in this case, that is the right-hand side. So decreasing my volume shifts to the right in this case. Now, this is the trickiest one. If we add some other random gas to our system here, let's say it was, uh, I don't know, neon or xenon. I don't care what the other gas is. Intuition might say, well, that increases the total pressure, and so it has an effect just like the volume does, but that's not the case. The deal is that the total pressure caused by nitrogen remains the same. The total pressure contributed by hydrogen remains the same, and the total pressure contributed by ammonia stays the same. Just because you're increasing the total pressure by adding some random gas, doesn't change the partial pressure of each of these gases. Just because you add neon or xenon doesn't mean we're shifting the equilibrium one way or another. In fact, there is no effect when you add some gas, or any chemical for that matter, that doesn't affect the equilibrium or isn't in the chemical reaction. It doesn't affect the equilibrium. Why would it? They're not even chemically reactive with each other. And so, let me just re uh, summarize for you that Le Chatelier's principle means if you have a system that's at equilibrium or in a state of balance and you change the system somehow, doesn't matter how, it could be adding uh, some reactant or removing some product or changing the temperature or volume or adding whatever, the system is going to react to partially offset the change. Qualitatively, it should make sense. Rewatch the video if any of those particular changes didn't make sense. And best of luck in your own Le Chatelieric adventures.